do Lexi from the United States who takes LDM for Parkinson's disease. Thank you for joining me, Lexi. Thank you. I appreciate um, being here. Could you tell us when you first started to notice there was something wrong with you? Well, actually, um, my non-smoke motor symptoms started um, 20 plus years ago. And I didn't realize at the time that they were non-motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Um, I started having insomnia, um, really chronic insomnia, and that was a, a real new symptom for me. Um, I also started having severe anxiety, and um, for both of those symptoms, I was put on a sleeping medication for my insomnia and on an antidepressant for my anxiety. And then I started having urinary incontinence, which was really unusual for me because I'd never had children and never had any kind of a problem like that at all. So I went to a urologist and he diagnosed me with bladder spasms and I asked him what the cause of bladder spasms could be and he said, well, it could be either MS or Parkinson's disease or sometimes it's just idiopathic. And I thought, oh, my gosh, maybe I have MS. And he said, well, you don't have any symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And I said, oh, no, no. And so um, they did an MRI, and it showed no MS. And so we just determined that it was idiopathic. And then about that same time when, oh, gosh, 20-plus years ago, I totally lost my sense of smell. Um, it started with olfactory hallucinations where I would get a smell in my nose and I couldn't get rid of it and it was just so odd. And then I just totally lost my sense of smell. It was gone for 20 plus years after that. And then I also started having constipation. So that was 20 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. So and then, <clears throat> at, at that time, 20 plus years ago, you, you were not being diagnosed by anybody and you were just left to get on with it, basically, apart from the sleeping tablets and the antidepressants. <clears throat> Is that right? Yes, absolutely. I just considered them to be just um, symptoms on their own and didn't connect the dots, dots at all, nor did anybody else. I went to different doctor for different symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what happened next? Well, in October of 2008, I was sitting in the bathtub and I noticed my right toe was tremoring. And I just thought, oh, that's so odd. So I called my husband in and said, look at my toe. My toe is tremoring. And um, then shortly after that, um, I was walking in our yard and my right foot wasn't picking up. I was having what appeared to be a right foot drag. It's like my brain wasn't telling my foot to lift up properly. And I tripped and fell several times. And that really scared me because it was like there was a, a loss of a brain connection there. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was falling when I was walking upstairs. So I went to my primary care physician. And that's the first time I heard the word Parkinson's disease. And he said, you might have Parkinson's disease. I suggest that you go to a neurologist. So um, that was really my very first symptoms in 2008. And then my husband noticed, and I noticed too, that my right arm wasn't swinging when we walked. And my left arm swung, but my right arm didn't swing. And then I started having this feeling of walking slowly like I was walking against the current of a river and that was one of my worst symptoms and this all started happening in 2008 and then I started having unexplained pain and stiffness and I had this debilitating sense of fatigue during the day. I couldn't make it through the day without naps. Um, what else did I have? I had a strange weak feeling in the back of my legs. It was very intense and I would just lay on the bed and I'd tell my husband it's just like the life is draining out of me when I was fatigued. And unfortunately I had a very um, stressful job, a job in outside sales which I loved, I'd had for years, but I just had no motivation to do anything and that became a real problem and I was losing my ability to handle job stress 
and I would just look at my desk in the morning and all of a sudden I would just become paralyzed by all that I had to do. I was just totally losing my ability to function on my job. I just felt overwhelmed. Um, my voice also started changing. It started to become soft and shaky. And my handwriting really changed. I used to have this big, loopy, pretty handwriting, and I could hardly read my own handwriting. It was small and scratchy. And what else? My constipation was severe. It continued, and my bladder spasms were so bad now, um, I couldn't even hold it for two to three to four minutes. When I had to go, I had to go immediately or I had an accident. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take you to get an appointment to see a neurologist? Well, um, I looked for a neurologist right away, and I found one in the city where I lived, and he just did some tests and told me matter-of-factly, he said, you have Parkinson's disease, and I was just devastated. I was just, oh, my gosh. You know, I just, I'd never had any kind of an illness that, that was, severe and, you know, I'd had a cold or not even the flu. I was just somebody who never really got sick. And so I thought, well, I need to go to another neurologist to confirm this. My husband and I flew down to the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I got another diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. And there they put me in the hospital and put these electrodes all over my body and I wasn't having any tremors, and I said, well, you're not going to be able to pick up anything because I don't have any tremors in my body. And they said, oh, we'll be able to pick it up. And sure enough, after an hour, they were able to pick up right side tremors from the top of my shoulder to the bottom of my foot. Mm. And um, so that was my second diagnosis. And then I chose a neurologist in the city, um, which I live, and she's been my neurologist up until this day. And what you is that? I'm sorry. What year was that? Was that still in uh, 2008? Um, she gave me the diagnosis right away also. She put me through all of the tests and said that I had Parkinson's disease. So I finally accepted it, but I really hated the no-hope diagnosis that she gave me when she told me the medications that they had. I was just mortified. I thought... You know, there's, do you think there'll be a cure in our lifetime? And she said, no. All three of the neurologists said the same thing. They all said, no, they didn't expect a cure in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And was that still in 2008? Um, that was in 2008, in November of 2008, yes. Mm -hmm. And how long did it take before you heard about LDN? Well, I started researching right away because I just couldn't handle that no-hope diagnosis, and I've always been the kind of person that looked through, at the world through rose-colored lenses, and I just couldn't imagine myself with a disease this debilitating. So um, I started looking on Parkinson's disease forums, and somebody on one of the forums was talking about LDN and how it had helped her father and I just immediately locked in on that, and I started contacting her, and she said it had just been a lifesaver for her father. And I started reading about LDN, and there was actually quite a bit of information at that time on the Internet. And so I decided that I wanted to try it and asked my neurologist um, if she would prescribe it for me, and she said no. And so that's where my journey began. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so before you started LDN, if you had to rate your quality of life at that point on a score of 1 to 10, and 10 being the best, what would it have been? Um, I would say about a 2 or a 3. Really? Not bad. Okay. So how did you manage to get a prescription for LDN? Well, first of all, I had to quit my longtime job. I just, there was no way I could handle my job anymore. So I started working part-time, and one month later, my neurologist wrote a letter and said that, um, you know, I was totally unable to work and perform on my job anymore, so um, I quit. And during that time was when I found LDN, and that was at the end of 2009. Mm-hmm. Okay. And my neurologist 
kept saying no, no, no about getting a prescription. Finally, on my third appointment with her, um, she finally relented and she did some research on her own and saw that LDN wouldn't hurt me, but she didn't think it would help me. And she thought, well, maybe I'll get some kind of a placebo effect with it. So she um, finally relented and wrote me a prescription. And when you first started, did you notice any introductory side effects? Uh, none, none whatsoever. When I first started taking it, I noticed nothing but good benefits, a feeling of well-being, um, my severe anxiety just seemed to dissipate, and I started feeling good the first week I was started taking it. That's good. I started feeling better. Mm-hmm. Did you take a very low dose when you initially started? Uh, I started on three milligrams, and that worked for me really well, and I took that for a year. And then after that, I upped it to 4.5 milligrams, and that's where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. So today, what would you say your symptoms are? Gosh, all of my symptoms got better. Um, The longer I took it, the better my symptom control became, and then I started having symptom reversal. So um, I've been taking it now for almost six years, and um, my neurologist kept saying I was having a tremendous placebo effect because every time I went to see her, I was better and better, and she just did, wouldn't believe that it was the LDN. Um, and I continued to take my Parkinson's disease meds with my LDN for the first year, and then very slowly started cutting back on them over a year's time. Now, today, I take no daily Parkinson's disease meds. I just take the LDN, and almost all of my Parkinson's symptoms, like I said, have either improved tremendously or reversed themselves. That's wonderful. So, on that score of 1 to 10, what would your quality of life be like today? Um, I would say... uh, a nine. That's unbelievable, isn't it? And that's the only medication you're taking? Yeah, I do take some supplements, but they don't have anything to do with the Parkinson's disease symptoms. They're more for um, brain health. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing that I noticed is I have no Parkinson's disease fatigue. I can go all day and late into the evening with no naps, which was huge for me. I had to take several naps during the day before LDN. Um, all of my symptoms pretty much went away. I didn't, I don't have a right foot drag. I have no more pain and stiffness. Um, my voice got stronger and today everyone says my voice is normal. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, my bladder spasms are 95% better. And one of the biggest things is I got my sense of smell back after not smelling anything for 25 years. I can smell almost oh, every single thing. That, that is truly amazing, isn't it? After all that length of time. Huge. That was huge. Mm. So um, what would you I say... Had, I, Sorry, what would you say, Lexi, to other people who have been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease who are probably very sceptical about taking LDN? Um, I would say to definitely give it a try. Um, I talked to several people today that I'm actually coaching and um, helping with their Parkinson's disease and their experience with LDN. And um, I just keep encouraging them, and if they get their LDN, at one of the um, recommended LDN pharmacies, I find that they always, always have a good result. The only time it doesn't seem to work for people is if they get it from um, a pharmacy that doesn't understand LDN. But practically everybody that I am dealing with is having the same experience that I am. It's, It's wonderful. Well, thank you very much for sharing your inspirational story with us. It really will help other people. Oh, it's my pleasure.